Okay, today we have an anonymous caller, which is so courageous. I know that many of you out there are suffering in your, you know, sex, love, or relationship world. I personally suffered greatly for many years in codependency, and it became very shamed. It was almost embarrassing of the ups and downs I was having in my relationships after doing so much work, and I was so confused. And so the intention of this call today is to really dive deep and have somebody courageously open their heart into actual details so that we can all relate and actually get acknowledged because all of us have had, you know, dark moments and dysfunctional moments in our relationship. So today, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. How are you you. doing? Mm -hmm. I'm good. (laughs) In our application, we talk about the different distinctions of narcissistic abuse, love or sex addiction, codependency or dysfunction, cheating or lying, alcoholism or drug addiction, financial or money abuse, and you put all of the above, which is so awesome. (laughs) I just love people when they get like, oh my gosh, let's get into the mess of all this. So (laughs) if you wouldn't mind, would you mind getting into some of the actual details? What is the current upset right now for you? Okay. So uh, I think like the biggest thing here is um, that, okay. So like five years ago, I I found text messages uh, between my husband and a couple of other women. Um, And then, so the reason why I had listed all of that, like all of, all of the above was because it's, these things kind of came up after that. Like, it was like, I kind of noticed like, I don't know, like the abuse and the sex addiction and like all like all these other things uh and then the I'm not enoughness and all all of that so um yeah so basically it comes it kind of boils down to five years ago that day when I when I found those messages (laughs) wow so five years let's just get the impact of that for a minute just holding all the people that are suffering out there that have gone through different things of cheating line or big upsets or you know big traumas within a relationship. So what we're going to do today and then kind of breaking down from a universal law perspective and from the truth of who you are. Okay. The truth is that you are none of these things. You're not the circumstances of your relationship. You are not somebody that's been cheated on. You're none of that. You're a divine spiritual being. But what we want to take a look at is the human side, right? So how's this actually been patterned out What meaning did you put around this? We recognize that all of relationships are really the projection and the reflection of the limited beliefs within ourselves. So how has this been? What meaning have you put on this for yourself? I guess I would say the meaning I've put on myself was that I'm not good enough or I'm not enough. Uh, Shortly after this happened, okay, so at the time I was doing like home daycare Mm -hmm. and then uh, shortly after like going through all of this with my husband, I closed my daycare because I was not happy doing it anyway. Um, and then I was like, I hired a, a spiritual uh, business coach. So I was like, I'm going to, uh, you know, do my own thing. <laughs> and uh, I never finished it. Like I never, since then, I've just like never followed through with anything. I kept feeling like um, I can't do it. I'm not enough. I'm not skilled enough. And then like, since then, yes, I've just kind of been a stay at home mom. I don't make any income. So it's starting to play out. Okay. I feel like I'm a burden on him now because financial, the financial uh, stress has been mostly like is put on him. So he's feeling uh, like, you know, Mm. yeah. So that's another piece of it. (laughs) Right. I wanted to say thank you again for sharing your heart. Okay. Cause so what happens, um, curious to know before this happened, right? Clearly this was a trauma when you found these text messages, because probably anyone in our culture would find that very traumatic and the meaning we put on that and the meaning that we place about ourselves of not being enough and stuff. So I'm going to consider that a trauma. Okay. But let's just take the patterning before that. I'm curious to know before that situation um, with your husband and then the mm-hmm. patterning of other relationships, what would you say was the patterning? Meaning there's a hack to this. Okay. When we take a look in our relationships, we know that everything's created within the mind. Everything's created within thyself and everything's projected out in a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that doesn't mean that you called in somebody that cheated or text somebody else. But what that means is what is the meaning that we placed around it? Meaning if somebody was had really high self-esteem and their partner was texting somebody else, or even let's pretend that they actually cheated. Okay. They might say, Hey, that really is sucks that you did that, that you went out of your own integrity and you must be really 
you know, hurting or something must not be fulfilled within the, the healthy person would not necessarily take it personal and make the meaning that I'm not enough. Okay. But we're human, right? And it'd be almost impossible to not do that without massive development. Okay. So what we want to take a look at is what was going on before that happened and, and how you can do it as a hack, as you can say, he made me feel right. He made me feel like I'm not enough. He made me feel like I was a burden. He, right. And so we can take a look at even before your marriage, like what was powering out in your other relationships, right? So what was that pattern? What did those other relationships make you feel as well? Wow. That's a hard question. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I think just like the allowing, I was allowing myself not to be treated the way I wanted and respected the way that I wanted to. I right. kind of like just mm-hmm. let things, oh, it's not, it's not worth the fight. Like it's not worth it. And I just kind of like, yeah, put my, tuck myself under the, okay, my feeling cool. stuff so under you the feel room. like, I mean, the core limited belief for all of us is I'm not enough. The core limited belief of human beings is I'm not enough. Okay. So if we know that life is a masterclass and everything is designed to help develop us in, in, in our, you know, coming back home to the truth of who we are, which is an all knowing, all loving, powerful spiritual being, then all these circumstances are basically demanding us to either, you know, to rise to the occasion. We're either going to succumb and be the effect of everything, or we're going to rise into our divine powers. And what I know for you is that you are that. And I absolutely know that no matter, no matter if there was text or cheating or the worst things ever that has happened, I'm knowing that for you in consciousness right now. Okay. So what do we do from here? Okay. So here, this happened five years ago. And my question for you is, are you really, I mean, you're, you're here, you're courageously here telling details, right? So do you mind me asking what was actually on those texts just so that people can get, people like a little bit of drama. Okay. That's just the reality. Yeah. Like what was yeah. on those texts? Did he actually cheat? What, what was the actual moment when you realized that this happened? So I, I, I do consider it cheating. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, it was like, I don't know, it was just like really flirty and dirty and just like things like saying things to them that I've never even heard him say to me. Mm-hmm. And just like, yeah, like it was kind of, um, it was gross. I don't know if I want to share. <laughs> okay. Okay. It was so- like asking to see things and like, and like just really dirty, flirty going back and forth, like, and then like trying to connect for lunch. And I can't really tell by the texts if they did collect connect to go like have lunch or dinner, but um, yeah, so that's that. Yeah, I totally get it. Okay. So just to relate, I was in a very much of a narcissistic abuse relationship where um, with a famous rock star and it was up and down and I found he cheated multiple times when he fell off the wagon. He was in alcoholic addict as well. And it was so heartbreaking, Um, you know, and for so long, I was, you know, really felt like he did this, right. And as I began to, you know, doing more and more of my work and realize that I would have never been in that relationship and I would have never stayed in that relationship. And I'm not saying for you to leave your marriage by any means, because I, your, your husband may be in a much better place than, than my partner was, but I realized that it was really the universe showing up for me to develop me in my own self-love and in getting really clear of my own principles and what my core values were and what I was willing to put up with or not so that I could create a life that was really in alignment with my truth. So I'm curious to know today, you know, it sounds like obviously you guys have not healed. And so clearly it must be outpicturing on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. So how is that outpicturing now in your arguments, in your disconnection, in in the patterns within your relationship now? Um yeah I guess just the way so when he cut when he does kind of like hey when he's like I don't know not in the greatest mood and uh you know it, it's like something anything I say I, it could be anything <laughs> um and he'll just fly off the handle and like tell like start like you know going off on me and then I kind of like I don't even defend myself most of the time yeah. um yeah. So there's that. And then there was one time a few weeks ago, actually, where uh, we both had a, probably a little bit too much to drink. And then I don't know, we just kind of like blew up and we talked, we talked about like how 
there is like no passion in our relationship. Like, what are we going to do? And um, like, what do you really want? Do you even want to be here? And then um, I, I kind of told him like those, like when I saw those messages and I, and what you did to me is like, I didn't, I, I now am like with this person that I don't know who you are. Like I've been with him for 22 years wow. <laughs> and, like, and it's like, and now I'm figuring out, I don't know who mm. you are and I don't know like, how to like be your wife the way you want me to or like yeah so I just kind of like said all that and then mm. yeah I don't know just, when we woke up yeah. the next morning, it was um I don't know we both really felt like we needed to heal each other like it was just yeah. like, mm. like it, it was nice but it was like it, at the same time we didn't really resolve anything we just kind of yeah. like you know okay. put it all there. <laughs> so I believe this is a divine appointment for you and for me and for for everything. And I wanted to say that I know you guys must have great love for each other to be together for 22 years. <laughs> and also recognize the vicious cycles that human beings get into and how we're not equipped with the ability to know how to handle it and how to break the cycles. So I'm just feeling a lot of compassion for you and your husband. Okay. I'm really, truly, you know, and we do all make mistakes um, at different times. And we also go into fight or flight. So the reactions that happen throughout the week or days or months of that vicious cycle of him flying off the handle, you shutting down, you know, we all have our patterns of how we handle things, but we're basically, we're going into the fight or flight into that system. That is almost like we don't even have a choice in that system. It just happens. It turns on and then everyone does all their damage. And then we come back out and we're like, wow, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. How do we do this? We love each other. So what I'm hearing from you is that you really do love your husband and he really does love you, but you don't know how to get out of kind of the living hell of the patterns that you guys have created for yourselves. Is that kind of what I'm hearing from you? That's like bang on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So one, I just want to disclose to the audience. I'm not a traditional therapist. I'm a doctor divinity. Okay. You know that. And really how we heal is through revealing truth. So I'm not here to manage. Okay. So I always say the same metaphor. It's like having a table and the table on top of it is all the issues. And we try and rearrange everything on top of the table. Like, oh, if you just communicate better, oh, if you just, you know, listen to him and validate him and then, you know, don't make him wrong and all those things, or what's the story you have around it and retell your story. Those are kind of like all things that we're moving around on the table on the top, which I believe don't truly work. They're kind of, they help a little bit, but they never actually stop the vicious cycle. My job is to go down onto the bottom of the table, down onto the floor and re get the foundation of each individual for them to get stabilized in truth. Okay. So what does that look like for you? And this is like a heart to heart, woman to woman, sister to sister, spirit to spirit right now. I care about you. And it just like, literally, I just want to cry because I know so many people suffer every day. And it's, we all want to love so bad. We want to love our partners. We want to love our best friends. And there's these patterns that we get into. Okay. So I believe that this is the only fix to this. Okay. And it yeah. is your relationship with your higher self that when we get steeped in that beloved divine with, you could say God source within divine, whatever it is, the label that you put on it. And I honor each person's label because there is no label for the nameless. It's your higher self. And I believe that when we go into deep meditation or prayer to the self or whatever it is to merge into the oneness, because you and your husband are one, you guys are literally one. You guys are literally equally playing out the dynamics of healing each other's wounds. Mm -hmm. And the wounds are there with perfection. He fulfills it exactly perfect to fulfill upon your limited beliefs of I'm not enough. And he is fulfilling upon something I'm not enough. And therefore I'm a perpetrator or whatever it is. Most of our dynamics of the men and women in our culture is the women become the victims. The men become the perpetrators, but actually they're equally the same. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's the answer? The answer is multiple fold. I think you guys need to decide, do you really want to actually break these patterns? Okay. And, and the other person doesn't necessarily need to agree to that. You are going to heal yourself regardless. He will rise to the occasion or not. It can't be contingent upon him wanting to heal. Mm -hmm. This is an individual job. Okay. And when you decide, I decide that I want to, I want to heal. That means you taking a hundred percent responsibility for who you want to show up in the world and in this relationship and that you release him of 
any need to make you happy, to to do what you expect him to do, to, you know, you're basically releasing him of everything and you are taking it back to source within to know that you, that's your only source for your love, for your joy, for your fulfillment, for any expectations. And it's kind of like a dying of the self into the divine woman that you were born to be. How does that feel for you? That sounds so beautiful and so empowering and the like the person I want to be. <laughs> yes. Mm, I know. And it's so much easier said than done, right? Yes. So <laughs> universal law will teach us over and over again that your subconscious mind is one with your neurological system. It's one with the brain. And if we through a trauma, whether it be the time that you saw those texts or it's probably actually came way before that and multiple lifetimes mm -hmm. of feeling like I'm not enough and I'm divided. That's our core thing, right? So the neurological system just reaffirms everything. Again, if somebody that was kind of fully empowered saw those texts from their husband, it would be, it might be like, oh, this is really stings, but they would know, wow, this is really showing where we are disconnected. This is really showing his own insecurities that he needs to go seek from other women. Mm -hmm. And this is really showing of how broken this marriage is. Yeah, They wouldn't necessarily take it as I'm not enough, they would see it as the outpicturing of the collective of the entire marriage. Yes, I 100% agree. Because I did say to him, like, how do I know you're not going to do this again? And I told I said to myself, like, if anything like this does ever happen again, I, I am a sovereign being, I know that this is the end, like, this is like, sorry, you, you, you made a mistake. Yes, I understand you're in a dark place. And, you know, there's a lot of other stuff going on too. his mom passed away mm -hmm. a few years before that. And that was really hard for him but I, I it's just like okay I get it it's like if that's your thing that's your thing I now it's time for me to really move on like yeah I, I would not ever accept anything like that again okay so woman to woman again mm -hmm. that this is the greatest master class of a gift that the universe has given to you in my opinion mm -hmm. and the reason why is because if we want to break these cycles we have to rise in our consciousness to become such badass consciousness that we become the queen. Yeah. If we want to be considered the queen by our partner, we have to become the queen. So the divine queen or the goddess, whichever you prefer, because some people may prefer the word goddess, is somebody who truly is sovereign in knowing that they create their emotions and that everything is released from their partner. It is the most advanced practice on this planet, as far as I'm concerned, it's way harder than, than being, you know, single and just being a conduit for, for source and for, you know, divine that these relationships are the most advanced masterclass on this planet. So I know you must be a very, very powerful spiritual being to call in such an advanced masterclass. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> yeah, I really, really know that for you. Okay, so let's make a plan. You ready to make a plan? One, I just want to ask you on a level of one to 10, 10 meaning that you are fully ready to become the goddess and heal yourself, not heal you and your husband because you don't have control over that per se, right. but heal yourself. Yeah, that's a 10. <laughs> okay, great. You're ready to break the negative cycle from your side of the street. Yes. Okay, great. What are you willing to do for it? Well, I, this has I nothing to do with me, nothing to do with working with it. What are you willing at a soul level, at a heart level to do for this? Um, I don't answer that. Um, mm -hmm. Like whatever it takes, I guess. Like mm -hmm. I... I can't really specifically say one thing. I don't know what that is. Great. It's something to contemplate within yourself yeah. in meditation, contemplative meditation. What are you willing to do for this? Okay. The true work is to, as we say, die of the self, die of the divided egoic self and be reborn into the true identity that I am, the oneness, the goddess that you are. Okay. What we have to be willing to do is to really give up everything we've known and to give up and forgive, forgive ourselves, forgive our partners, to give up the holding on to resentment, to give up, right? All of that, everything that we thought we were and, and come into a divine presence every single day. What is your spiritual practice? Do you have a practice right now? Uh, yeah. Uh, so like when I get up in the morning, like my morning routine kind of thing, is that what you're asking? Yeah, just a spiritual okay. practice, whatever it is for you to to have a relationship with with your higher self. 
second. Yeah. Okay. So I wake up in the morning, hands on my heart, and I just kind mm. of a little prayer to the universe or God and just thanking him, you know, sending out gratitude and asking for clearing and protection. And then I'll kind of uh, get ready, come to my altar. Mm, beautiful. Palo Santo. And I'll do either a silent meditation or a guided meditation. Great. And how yeah. do you feel when you come out of that? that session for yourself? Uh, so it fluctuates. <laughs> I sometimes feel like, Hey, that was like, meh, there's just another, I just, a thing I do all the time. Mm -hmm. And then other days it's like, okay, I want to journal a little bit, or I want to like, you know, oh. I feel a little bit of, you know, shift and. Okay. Uh, great. Mm -hmm. okay. So my prescription for you as a doctor of divinity, not a traditional doctor, I have a prescription for you. Okay. One is I would love for you to do your trauma work doesn't mean you have to do it with me. There's many people that do trauma work. Of course, E4 is profound, but my, as I would tell my best friend, please do your trauma work. Okay. Because trauma work is going to release the emotions around the thing that happened five years ago. Okay. It's going to release the emotions around it. It doesn't mean it forgives the whole thing and there's not action to take around it, but it, for, it releases the negative emotions that are making, you know, really the division in mind and the real triggers that happen all the time. Okay. So trauma work is imperative. In E4 trauma method, what we do is we don't just neutralize the charge around those traumatic incidents, but we actually look at what commands you decided, what limited beliefs, I'm not enough, I'm a burden, right? Something's wrong with me, whatever that is, those commands, and we pull them up from the subconscious so they're not just playing out on rote like puppet strings in your life. Mm -hmm. What we also do is we make new declarations and we begin to powerfully program positive things into the subconscious mind. Okay. So that's a prescription. I really, really want for you to do your trauma work, wherever that is, whatever calls for you. Okay. The next thing is, is I invite you to go much deeper in your spiritual practice. Okay. Whether that means joining a meditation group or getting trained in meditation or finding your local meditation place or whatever it is in general, it's very hard for people to do it alone. I would invite you to, you know, or maybe it's a, an app, but maybe it's something not just guided meditations. At some point in time, we need to go into the actual silence. The yeah. only way we truly merge with our higher self is through total silence, even beyond mantra. Okay. So those are the two prescriptions that I have for you to be able to come to this higher self. Okay. The thing that people need to know also is I would never tell somebody to get divorced and I would never tell them to break up. However, if your arguments are so strong in your marriage that you're getting re-traumatized, then what we say and say even like a 12-step program or codependency is we actually want people to leave their environment to just while they heal. Okay. So oftentimes people don't really tell us how bad it really is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to say that here or not, but as your friend again, if it's getting so bad and it's not just upsets, like it's raging fights, then what I would recommend is for people to go into different environments to be able to do their healings so that they can heal and then they can come back in together to be able to know what's really going on over here versus where my where is my healing. Okay. okay. So how does that sound for you? That sounds great. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So let's do a spiritual mind treatment. And knowing that the spoken word informs universal law, it informs the subconscious mind, and it plays out the polarity in the universe. So what is it that you're ready to declare for your life and for your embodiment of truth? Um, empowerment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's my... Yeah. I just want to feel empowered. I want to be a powerful queen and stand in my power when like, and know that when things are not maybe the way I want them to be, I can look within myself and know that I'm, uh, I'm div divine. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. So let's take a deep breath together. You can put your hands together if you want. We do this just to really rub. There's like 70,000 uh, neurons on the hands and we're connecting the right and left hemisphere of the brain and all the neurological systems. So that's actually why we place the hands together on the heart because we're connecting the heart with the head. We're connecting into that oneness, really easing into the neurological system, taking some deep breaths in, suspending the breath at the top, exhaling out, just coming as divine presence. I recognize right here, this divine goddess. I recognize this 22 years and the significance of the 22 years of, of the humanhood of this marriage 
marriage. And in this, I recognize the perfection, the growth, and the relative experience for for this divine couple and this divine goddess to come to truth. May they lay down the sword. May they lay down the sword and come revere to the beloved divine within the divine and claim her goddessness right here, right now, coming into her dignity, coming into her strength, knowing that this is the decision right here, right now. And even in the law of growth, it may take some time to fully embody this in the outpicturing of her relationship and herself in the embodiment. But right here, it is done. It is spoken into the one divine mind. It is spoken into the subconscious mind, which is the subjective mind, which hears infinitely and goes into an automated system. I declare by the power of my word, which is the creative factor of all of life, for this goddess to rise in her divine that she is. I see simply know this. I see this perfect divine woman absolutely being a leader for her family, for her friends, and for the entire globe, knowing that it is exactly what we want, which is love, the embodiment of love. That is the goddess. I simply know this in the name of truth, as together we say, and so it is. Oh, thank mm. you so much. <laughs> yes. May you have support. May you find a community that can support you in truth. May you break the cycle. May you absolutely do your trauma work. And may you absolutely have a profound spiritual practice to come back home each day to be able to live as the goddess that you are. Okay. Thank you so much for being so brave and so courageous. I really appreciate your heart. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This is wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm.